I've just written down the equation. Believe it or not, we can get pretty much everything we need just off of this. What are the first things that are asked of us? It says, write down its center amplitude and extremes of displacement. That's a bit of a weird phrase, but we can get to, you might be able to infer what that's asking for just by the language. Let's start off with the center. I mentioned it right here, right? If you start off with just your vanilla old sine function, it's going up and down, and the, big, the middle of it is just x equals zero, right? So when we introduce this kind of vertical shift, whether it's up or down, you just change where that middle is. So which part of our equation is that? That's the three, right on the end there. So I'm just gonna say center of motion. And then I'm gonna say, because I've got lots of equations that are gonna be flying around for displacement and velocity and acceleration, I'm not just gonna say it's three, I'm gonna say it's x equals three, because that's what displacement is, it's x. Choose the right pronumer, you're gonna have a lot flying around, okay? Next thing, amplitude. You don't even need to know that this is simple harmonic motion to look at this function and tell me which number, which value is gonna give you the amplitude here. It's two, right? This is the part that tells you how far up and down you can go. So I'm gonna say my amplitude, and customarily we use A, because we're boring about that, A is equal to two. Now the extremes of displacement, what does that mean? Well, extremes are like, what are the furthest places you can go? What's the most extreme value? So in this case, um, and some people will call them extremities, and I like to use that because it's just lazier, it's only one word. I'm gonna be from the middle, and then you can see how far up and how far down you can go, right? So here's my middle, right here. What's the lowest you can go from x equals three? You can go two units down to one, and then what's the highest you can go from three? up to five. So I can say my extremities are x equals one and x equals five. That's it. I just read them off. It's my a plus or minus, sorry, it's my x plus or minus a. Again. And is the correct Ah, okay. Good question. Are my extremities x equals one or x equals five? I'm actually describing something which is plural. So that's why I think it's totally legit to say and it's both of them. You have to have two extremes. Um, however, I mean, if you put a comma in here, I don't think anyone would be upset with you, okay? All right, that was part A. Is that all I was asking for? Yep. Part B, determine the period, initial phase, and location at time zero. Our initial period, or sorry, our initial location, our period, and our phase. Okay. How do we work out period of a trigonometric function? If, for example, you started back at, let's just look at a, like the most vanilla of all trigonometric functions, its period in this case would be two pi, two pi right? When you add in this n, I always think to myself, it's like, oh, if I had signed 2t, I've got two copies of that within two pi. If I had signed 3t, I'd have three copies within two pi. So what I'm doing really is I'm, yeah, I'm dividing by whatever that coefficient is, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna say my period is going to be two pi, divided by whatever my coefficient of, <coughs> excuse me, t is, which in this case is pi on two. So just being careful for my fractions on fractions there, you can see why I introduced brackets. Pi's are gonna cancel, you get left with? Two, two divided by a half, which is four. Now I'm just having a look and noticing whether there are any units for me, and I don't think there are, but it's customary when you don't get provided ones, I'm pretty sure you generally go with centimeters and seconds. So with this, I could just say four seconds, but I'm gonna be even more, um, I'm gonna be even more vague and I'm just gonna say time units because they didn't say anything, so I'm just gonna go with whatever. Um, that's completely nondescript. There's the period. What's the next thing they asked for? Initial phase. Now, coming back to here, right? You saw me do this, right? I introduced this extra angle in here to say, I don't have to start at the origin, I could start anywhere, right? So just like we did with amplitude, uh, and very similar to, and the center of motion as well, I can just read this off. What's the value in this particular one? Pi on six, that's it. Okay, last piece. I think we've got all of the bits now to be able to say when time equals zero initially, time equals zero, implies x equals, what are you gonna get? Two sine, this is zero, 
So it's really sine of pi on 6. What's pi on 6? Sine of pi on 6 again? That's a half. Right, that's a half. Plus 3. So I'm really getting 2 times a half plus 3. That looks like 4 to me. You okay with that? And again, uh, I haven't been provided units here. It's customarily seconds, but sorry, centimeters. But I'm just going to go with units there just to be ultra safe. All right, last bit. What's it asking? Determine when the particle is next at that spot. Right there. How soon does it take, or how much time does it take to get back to that spot? Hmm. Now have a think about this for a second. I could go straight to some equations and that kind of thing and work out what's going on. Um, I know I'm going to be back there in four time units, four seconds perhaps, because that's the entire period. But can I get back there sooner? What do you think? Yeah, uh, okay, good, good, good. So in terms of the symmetry of the sine function, just have a look here, right? Uh, we already decided, okay, we're going between uh, one and five. So picture one being the bottom of that wave and five being the top. And we're asking, well, how soon will we get back to this position four? Okay, now we could go through one entire period of motion and of course you'd return back because that's what a period of motion is. But you can see if I just pause it somewhere like that, right? I'm gonna go a little further. There we go. Just have a look at my horizontal line right there. Okay, do you see there's another point of intersection which happens much sooner than, in fact, that was not the best example. I think I could, uh, there will do it. There you go. So if you imagine the first time as the first intersection of that horizontal line with uh, the sine wave, okay, and then there's another one just on the other side of the crest. I don't have to go all the way to the next period to get one. Okay, so we need to find out what that is. We want to solve for x equals this. We already know one of the answers will be this. We also know one of the answers will be this. Can you find me one that is sooner or between these two? Can I let you have a play with that? It's just solving a trigonometric equation. See if you can get a reasonable answer for me. Off you go. I'm just mindful of time. I was originally going to do another example for you, but that's a bad idea. So I'm just going to show you where this particular question ends. Did you get your four on three? Yeah. That's what I got. Okay. Um, do you have to set it out like this? No, but uh, like Sham, I was doing this without a calculator and I wanted to make sure I got all my right values. So I was just doing exact values in my head. Uh, you can see me doing... Let's get the right spot here. Uh, you can see me getting to a half and then recognizing, oh, I know there's a bunch of values for pi on 2t plus pi on 6, that sine of that will give you a half. Pi on 6 is one of them, 5 pi on 6 is the next one, that's the obtuse one, and then I go uh, a full cycle of 2 pi, right? Uh, 12 pi on 6 to get to this one. I already know, I'm already anticipating that these ones will give me the initial condition. These ones here will give me the, oh, it's a full cycle later, so that's why you end up at 4. This is the one in between that I'm really interested in, right? I, I'd be probably pretty happy if, uh, given everything else that you just did in the question, you just went straight to this part. But I wanted to illustrate why I knew it was going to be that one, which honestly, under exam conditions, I don't instantly know. I'm like, I don't know, I'm just trying to solve stuff and I haven't thought through what each of the solutions will mean.